for infinite line. So in terms of Coulomb constant, rather than the permittivity of free space, it should be two Coulomb constant times the linear charge density divided by distance from the line and um, r hat. And this uh, unit vector here is radially pointing away from the line, which is sometimes, um, so in the side view there, it looks all straight because that's radially away from a line, not from a single point towards it. So, so that's for infinite line. I'll sketch multiple views here to, um, so that to make sure that we have a correct view of the three dimensional arrangements of the fields. And B is for infinite plane. And here the electric field should be, the magnitude should be independent of uh, distance. That's just how it works out nicely. And the numerical coefficient here should be two pi times the Coulomb constant. So, uh, so that's the numerical coefficient in front. I think there's a factor that depends on the the surface charge density. Let me write that down. Sigma. That's the symbol we normally use. And for the direction, I use a normal uh, vector n hat. So those are the two form formulas that are given for the electric fields. And what we are asked to do is a sketch it. So I think with the sketches like this, a perspective of view is probably the one I want to start out with to make sure I didn't miss anything. Imagine I have a line of charge and this line of charges uh, is characterized by charge density, uh, which should be total amount of charge divided by length. Uh, if, so if uh, you get uncomfortable with the length of an infinite line, then just talk, think about a very long line and you are, um, Consider the space close to the very long line. And yes, linear charge density. So in the perspective view, you should have radially outgoing electric fields. And what that means is for each of these points here, I can imagine a plane associated with that point, plane that's perpendicular to the line. And on that plane, I would have uh, electric fields that are pointed radially outward. So this is where perspective sometimes gets a little bit challenging because you know it should. If I have a circle on the plane from the side, it should look a little bit um, elliptical. That's what I'm trying to draw here, and sometimes it looks okay, sometimes not. Uh, let me just draw this many electric field line. So that's about perspective view. Um, and uh, so electric field lines, the typical way you draw them is they extend out to forever because the rule is that they start and end on positive and negative charges. So if they don't encounter any negative charge, then you should make it uh, clear that these field lines are extending out to infinity. Um, and, and this is where perspective view starts getting a little bit modeled because those lines that appear to be crossing each other, they're not actually crossing each other. It's just, uh, you know, in the perspective they are appearing to. So uh, let me just end it here. I think it's getting more confusing than actually useful. So because of that, I like to draw two different views. One is the side view. So I can imagine someone standing here, looking at it from side. So there's a side view. And I can draw a top view because side view will definitely miss something. But if I imagine someone being up here at the top and sort of looking down on the um, on the line of charge. So, so th that would be the top view. So when I draw the side view, the side view is going to look like what you saw in that other um, recorded video. So I'll have this line of charge and my electric field will be going radially outward, which on side view looks like it's something just the horizontally pointing outward. So these would be my electric fields. And the top view, because the side view gives a bit of a mis... So I guess this is how you can tell it's a bit misleading. The side view of electric fields for an infinite line looks basically exactly the same as the side view of electric fields for infinite plane. But you know they are not the same. They just happen to look the same inside of you. So uh, here, the drawing, I should draw the top view so that it, um, people are not confused. 
Um, in the top view, the, this line of charge should look like a single point because you imagine you're looking straight at it. And the electric fields, they point away radially. This is how they should point. It should look symmetric. It should do, so the top view of this charge distribution, it should look the same as top view of a point charge distribution. But again, it, they're not the same because uh, as you can see here, the side view is different. So, but that's uh, the sketch of the electric fields of an infinite line. And I hope um, as you are going, or as you imagine going through the exercise that you have a feel for what electric field lines for an infinite line looks like. And that uh, picture is important in applying Gauss's law arguments accurately. So, so that's A. For infinite plane, um, let me start out with a perspective view. You do have some kind of charge distribution that I'm gonna try to uh, draw a rectangular portion of the infinite plane in perspective view. And um, you would have electric field lines pointing directly away from that plane. And uh, I'm trying to space, that out, space them out in a uniform looking way. I don't know if they necessarily look uniform. And there should also be electric fields pointing away in the other direction. So this is what the results you have seen said. And um, so this is the perspective view, which it distorts some of the uh, dense line densities and all that stuff which is why I think it's useful to draw uh, a side view. So side view would be someone standing here, just looking at the plane edgewise. Then your plane of charges would look kind of like a line and your electric fields will basically look similar to how they looked for a line. But one distinction that you know in your heart is this, that with the line charge, the magnitude of electric field was decreasing. And that was consistent with the top view of the electric field lines where they are dispersing out. In this side view, the electric fields, uh, they are parallel and their, their strength doesn't decrease. The, as you go farther away, the electric field magnitude is still the same. And let me draw, um, uh, hmm, I guess in this view, the correct way to phrase it would be right view. As in, I'm imagining an observer being here and looking at it this way. And uh, this is where you kind of need some convention for drawing vectors in three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional plane. I think you might have seen this convention where if I draw a circle with a dot that represents a vector out of plane, and if I draw circle with an X inside that represents a vector into the plane. And the image, imagery that this is trying to use is on that of an arrow. When you are looking at this, imagine you are looking at the tip of the arrow and its broader body, so that's the circle, the tip is the point. When you are looking at this, you are imagining you are looking at the tail end of the arrow, and as you are looking at the tail end, you see the, uh, the feather or tail, <laughs> and that's what that X is. So with the help of those notations, I can draw the right view. And that would look like a plane of a uniform uh, vectors out of plane. So um, I just got to draw a few of these circles evenly spread out and um, how you draw them evenly spread out, that's up to you. I'm just going to draw three lines of these. But with a truly infinite plane, there's basically infinite number of these. Um, I'll have electric fields pointing out of this. So it's very odd looking drawing, but I hope you, it either looks familiar to you already because the convention is familiar to you, or if not, then it'll become familiar. Um, when you're dealing with electricity, we actually don't really have to deal with the three-dimensional representation too often. Uh, I mean, you should have that three-dimensional view in the background, but in terms of having to use it, you don't really have to. Uh, that will change when we get to magnetism. Magnetism necessarily involves all three dimensions. So, um, so that's where the notations like this will become useful. So now it's a good time to get acquainted. I don't know why I wrote A there. That should have been a B, right? Because I'm doing plane. So anyways, these are the uh, electric field lines or electric field views for 
um, infinite line and plane. You can see with uh, uh, these that there were clearly electric field lines. And, you know, by the time I get to this, uh, there's no way to really draw the field lines that's uh, representative. So I gave up on drawing field lines and just represented the, the vectors accurately. Um, so yeah, that's question eight. Sketch electric field for an infinite line and an infinite plane. And I think for the rest of this exercise, especially as the question talks about the uniform electric field, I'm going to imagine this uh, infinite plane electric field for quite a bit. And the picture that I will be drawing most of the time will be this picture. And I just want to caution you not to confuse it with the side of view for an infinite line because the, even though they might appear the same, but they are qualitatively different. The magnitudes here don't depend on distance. The magnitudes for infinite line does. So 